I'm going to show you how to load maps from Gaia into Garmin and onto your Garmin smartwatch in 30 seconds or less. Starting in 3, 2, 1. Before I do that though, I think I need to run through creating a route in Gaia, some basic navigation stuff so that you're comfortable doing that and creating it before you push that into Garmin in 30 seconds or less. After that, I'm going to show you real quick how I push that on my phone and then I'm going to run through it a little bit smoother on my phone so that I can explain what's happening. And then finally, I'm going to show you how to launch that activity with that map navigation and that information and that route on your Garmin watch. So let's jump into Gaia. When you first log into GaiaGPS.com, that's that address on the top corner of the screen, it's going to bring up a login page. I highly suggest creating an account. I pay about $80 Canadian per year for it, and it has been incredible for me. I love it. Once you've got your credentials in, you're going to hit login. As that comes up, it's going to open up to the map page. That map page is going to be the last map page you were looking at. So next time you log in, it might be different, but it's where you left off. And it's going to show you a bunch of things. On this screen here, you can navigate in and out with the scroll button on your mouse or you can do it through these zoom in and out functions in the corner. The other ways to navigate is you're going to click and drag across the screen. So it's pretty intuitive on your phone. It's like a touch screen. So it's the same thing and it works the same way. The desktop version, I prefer for route planning. I can just see more information at the same time. And then this last one is a legend. So when you click on that, what it's going to do is it's going to look at everything that's on the screen and only what's displaying, and it's going to give you a legend of what those things are. So if I scroll farther out, you'll see that that legend changed and the Alpine Trail was added to it. And as I hover over Alpine Trail, you can see in the top corner how things have been highlighted. I can highlight the different things on the screen based on what I've got my mouse over so that I can get a better idea of what kind of conditions are there and what those trails are for. Very cool feature. Legend is a great tool. Now this top left section of the site is fantastic. It gives you overlays, which means I can actually turn on and off different things in my view. So right now I'm showing waypoints. You can see that's enabled and I'm showing routes and tracks. If I were to turn off routes, it would take off, you saw that black line up there disappeared, that's my trail to Pickle Jar Lakes. If I click route back on, it's back there. If I turn off tracks, it's gonna take out this track that I created, which took me to Loomis Lake. I'm gonna turn that back on so you can see it. If I turn off waypoints, it's gonna turn off all of the waypoints that I've marked on Gaia as I've gone through and marked things, and it's gonna hide them. It's just a way to clutter or declutter your map in a way that you see fit. This next spot on here is layers. The two maps that I'm recommending are the satellite with labels and the Gaia topo meters. The only reason for this for me is so that I can look at this and as I'm looking at a route, let's say I'm looking for this route to uh, Carnarvon Lake. As I'm looking at that route, if I see that trail and I'm like, I wonder if that's trees or I wonder if that's alpine or what that is, I can now slowly drag this back and expose the satellite version behind it to see what that terrain actually looks like. Those sliders measure the transparency of the map and which one's on top and bottom. If I wanted to see the satellite on top, all I have to do is drag it on top and you see those switch places. Now it's a layer on top of the other layer. So I'm going to move that back down because I don't need to show you guys the satellite for the rest of this. The next part of this is saved items, and we'll get into how that works a little bit closer as we get through this, but it essentially allows you to save routes and maps and waypoints and all those things into groupings or individually so that you can do that. We're going to do it as a folder so that we can export that whole thing over to Garmin. The section below that allows you to create waypoints, routes, and areas. For today, what we're going to do is we're going to create a route and add a waypoint put them in a folder and use that folder to export into Garmin. So I'm gonna start with a root. For an example, as soon as I click root there for create, it's gonna pop up this section on the bottom where I'm gonna see a whole bunch of information about this hike that I'm planning. I'm gonna edit the name and I'm gonna call this one Carnarvon because it's a trip to Carnarvon Lake that I'm doing the route for. 
and then I'm going to change the color and that's going to change what color is displayed over top of the map. I'm going to make it black just for the sake of this so that you can see the detail better. And then you notice that my cursor turned to this little crosshair. When I go to that Cat Creek day use area where this hike takes off from, I'm going to click that and it's going to add a point in that map, in that route. When I then go to the destination I want to go to, you see, I haven't clicked anything yet, but you see it automatically fill in the route. It's looking at the trails that are there and what's connected, and it's putting that together for you. So as soon as I create that second point on my route, it's going to populate this bottom section with the distance, right? You've got 9.9 .9 kilometers, the elevation gain and the descent. So you can see what the, the difficulty of the terrain is going to look like, sort of, at least for effort level. And then as you scroll through here, you can see on this trail where I'm at and what it looks like. These buttons here are pretty important in how you go about planning your routes. If you're doing an in and out hike, not a big deal, right? I'm going to hit back to start and it's going to go right back to the beginning along that same trail because that's the route it mapped out. I'm going to hit undo so that doesn't pop up, but I can also hit out and back and that will ensure that it follows the same route. Because let me just hit cancel here and I'll create a new one just as an example. When I go to create a route, if I started here, let's say, and then I went to the top of Strawberry Hills, and I created a point there, and I went to a point here, this would then be different whether I was doing an out and back or whether I wanted it to go back from the start. If I wanted an out and back, it's gonna follow the same route back. You'll see now that this has arrows on that map both directions, right? And the profile and the map is routing in both directions. I'll hit cancel on that point. When I create a route for that route again, but I'm going to do it with not out and back, I'm going to do it with return to start, it's going to pick the nearest route or the quickest route or the shortest route. So you saw that when I did that, it actually closed the loop because it was easier to go back this way than it was to go back up and around. Just a note on how those work. You then have reverse. If you're doing a full one, you could just reverse the whole track back. Let me cancel this again and show you something else. Now you noticed when I was doing the map on Carnarvon Lake that the route itself auto-filled, right? I clicked on the starting point and I went to the ending point and that route auto-populated with kind of the trails that were there. There are situations where it doesn't do that for some reason. Like if I've got a plan for Lake at the Horns instead of Carnarvon, my route starts at the same place. And you see, as I go along this and hover along the trail, it is mapping it to that route all the way up until here. Here, it bypasses and goes a different direction because there are no connections. If I zoom in real close, you can see that there's two breaks where these trails aren't connected, right here and right here. So I actually have to click on that. You'll see it populated the route through. And then I'm going to click manually to get it to jump to this section here. That's just the easiest way to connect a bunch of trails that might be there. I'll click on the end. And then all of a sudden I've got this full route, even though those trails aren't truly connected, right? So it's important to see that. I'm going to use this route for what we're going to export. So let me just rename it here. Uh, Lake of the Horns. And I'll save that. And I'm going to make it black just because I like black. It stands out better on the map. As soon as I hit save, that's going to pop up in this window with this area. Right? It's showing me my full hike. I'm only going one way because on my, my watch, I can actually hit reverse direction. So I don't need the map both ways. I can run it in reverse by starting a second activity on the map and on my watch. So I'm just going to do that one way. I also want to do something else though. I want to add a spot for where I want to camp. So I'm just going to close this window. I'm going to add a waypoint. Now this waypoint has got the, it pops up with this little icon and I'm just going to drop that right where I want to camp, right? This is where I want to camp. And I want to show it that it's a camp spot. So I'm going to change the icon to a camp and I'm going to make it black because I like black. It stands out better for me. And I'm going to name it for uh, camp spot, right? Doesn't have to be spelled right. So now I've got, when I click off here, I've got a route 
from Cat Creek Day Use to Lake of the Horns, and I've got an identity of where I'm going to stay. I've got a, a marker for where I'm going to camp. But these, when I look at my saved items, are two different things. My campsite, campsite and my route are two different things, but I want them to be the same. So to do that, all I'm going to do is I'm going to click on one, I'm going to click on the other, and I'm going to choose to create a new folder. This folder icon is going to let me create a new one, and I'm going to call it L-O-T-H hike, Lake of the Horns hike, and I'll hit create folder. Now I've got a folder that contains those two things. So you see when I navigate off of here, if I were to go to my saved items and I wanted to look at, let's say, Loomis Lake, these are all the items in a Loomis Lake, and that folder will bring it up. And I can see that in the items section of that kind of pop-up tab, where all those items are and see them one by one. And I can navigate through it pretty clean. I'll go back to that Lake of the Horns hike folder, and you can see that map is still there and it's all there. This is the file that I use to send to my loved ones before I go on a hike. The day before I leave, I always go to this open details page and it's gonna pop up a new tab. You saw that in the top corner. And this has got my route and my waypoints. It's got my distance, it's got my ascent, it's got some information. It's got what the two different GPX items are inside it. And I can choose to share that in here and just send them this link directly to say, hey, this is where I'm camping for the next day. See you when I get back. That way, if anything happens, they have an actual map of where I'm gonna be and when. Very cool feature. Thank you, Gaia. Close that tab down. We'll go back to the map. So now I've got my route saved in a folder. Good to go. Let's jump into my phone. Start the timer. Starting in three, two, one, go. I hope I hit 30 seconds. I just finished. It's now going to sync to my phone the next time Garmin Connect syncs to my phone, which probably already did. All right, let's walk through this a little slower so you have an idea of what's happening here. The first thing I did was I opened the Gaia app. As that opens, it's going to bring me to the same page you saw on the desktop, but on my phone. From there, I'm going to click on Saved Items and it will bring up the item that I just saved. This is in the cloud, so it syncs it all together. I click on that folder, and all I wanna do is hit share. That folder contains all of the waypoints and all of the route information that I clicked on and made in the desktop app. So I'm gonna click share, and that share is gonna give me some options. In this scenario, what I wanna do is I wanna export the GPX file. So I'll click export file and select GPX. It then gives me an option of where to export it to, and Garmin Connect shows up on the list very quickly. So when I click Garmin Connect, it then automatically opens Garmin Connect, and it says, what type of course are you doing? Is it biking? Is it running? Is it trail running? Is it hiking? I'm going to make this a hiking route by selecting hiking. Then it's going to just ask me to save that and bring in the name of the thing that I named it when I created it in Gaia. So I'll click Save there. Now, this is now in my Garmin ecosystem, but it's not on my watch. The very last thing I have to do is click on the bottom right where it's got that little watch icon with the arrow through it and hit Send to Watch, and it tells me, hey, this is going to sync next time you're there. Now that we've synced those ecosystems, let me show you how to set this up on the watch so you can start your hike. What you're going to do is you're going to hit the top right hand button and what that's going to do is going to open up activities. You're going to scroll to or select the one that you want and the one we want is hike because we created a hiking route. So I select hike and in here it's got a couple of options. I don't want to do it. Oh, I guess I just synced the GPS and gave me the hours of time I have left on my battery. What I want to do now is before I start my activity, I want to click on this menu button and it's going to ask me to pick a navigate option. I'll select the navigate option and I'm going to pick from the saved courses. 
Now you see it's got a bunch in there, and these are the ones I just added, one and two, just seconds ago on the apps on my phone. So I'll click on the Lake of the Horns, I'll select that, and it's saying, do you wanna do the course or just show the map? I wanna actually do the course. So it's gonna jump up on there, and then when I hit start, Finish line in 12 kilometers. Then when I hit start, my phone's gonna tell me that it's far away, 12 kilometer hike. It's also gonna update some screens. It's telling me on the map where I am, if I scroll down to the next screen, it's got my compass. If I scroll down to the next screen, it's got how far off course I am. Apparently I'm 108 kilometers off course. It also shows me the elevation profile of that hike as I'm doing it. So as I'm going through that, that will change color and show what I've completed and what's coming up. It gives me how much time it thinks I have left based on my average hiking rate. And then finally, this is the screen that I leave it on where it's got all the information for the hike. I'm gonna stop the hike here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm not gonna save this. I'm gonna discard it because I'm not actually in the mountains doing a hike. And I'm just gonna to return to my home screen by hitting the back button.